Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you for being here. I appreciate everybody coming together. Uh, obviously, all here to hear the accreditation report from Middle States. Before we begin, uh, I've asked the bishop to just offer an opening prayer. So, sure. thank you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Loving and gracious God, your majesty arches all times and seasons. We ask that you be with us during these pleasant days. Strengthen all of us in the journey of life and faith. Help all who help us in the field of Catholic education. Teachers and administrators, parents and students, pastors and diocesan staff. Strengthen all of them as they try and bring the joy of the gospel to all with whom we come in contact. We're grateful for our visitors representing the Middle States Educational Association. We ask that you bless them and grant them safety in their travels. For Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. So again, thank you and welcome. Uh, you know, it's an amazing culmination today uh, as we finish and complete uh, what really ended up to be a two-year process. <coughs> I think all of you, knowing what has occurred over the last four days of that two years of planning, we brought together a new group of friends of professional relations uh, from within our own diocese and the family that makes up the Diocese of Syracuse to the many people who are here as visitors. Being, as, as I'm recently hearing, being critical friends of what we try to do here in the Diocese of Syracuse to plan for the very best educational system that we can provide for our students. And before I introduce Dr. Cram to offer uh, a preliminary report, I want to offer some thanks. And first, I think it's important to recognize uh, the people that began this process, uh, acknowledging Chris Mamani as the superintendent, uh, acknowledging also Monsignor Sheehan, who was blessed to be here, and thank you, Monsignor, it's great to see you here. Also, Bishop Cunningham for his unwavering support of Catholic education in all of our 22 Catholic schools. To the pastors and priests that represent those schools and our diocese, for without their support, of Catholic education, we know certainly that we would not be in existence today. To all of our friends and co-workers in the Chancery, uh, who again offer such great support to what we try to do on a daily basis in our Catholic school office. And to personally, to each of the members of the Catholic school office, to Cheryl, to Sandy, Linda, Mishka, and certainly most especially, to Barb Messina for the incredible work that Barb has done as our Middle States Coordinator. Thank you, Barbara. So as, uh, in just a minute, uh, Hank and company will just offer some remarks about where we are. And um, I, I see this really, and I think that we continue to look at this as uh, not the end of a process, but really the beginning, the commencement of what will be uh, hopefully over the last uh, or over the next several years to put in place plans that you have taken the last two years to draw together, to come together as professionals, as co-workers, as friends, to acknowledge what it is that it, we, we need to do to improve our schools, to make our schools the very, very best that they can be. <coughs> so I'd like to introduce at this time Dr. Hank Cram and Angela Rufo, who will present uh, some preliminary remarks. Thank you, Dr. Cram. Thank you, Mr. Chris. It's, it's my pleasure to be here this afternoon as the uh, president of the Middle States Association and as the team of the uh, Middle States team visiting the Diocese of Syracuse. The other members of the team and I want to uh, thank you for taking the time to hear our preliminary report this afternoon. We will leave Syracuse at the end of this report, feeling that we've had a full and rich experience in your community. We appreciate the warm reception we've received from the diocese and each of the school communities that we visited and the candor with which you have shared with us your concerns, 
your aspirations, and your hopes for the future of Catholic education throughout the diocese. Our report this afternoon is a brief summary of the major points that will likely be included in the written report about the system of schools and the individual component schools, which will be sent to you in approximately six weeks. At the conclusion of this report, as is our custom, we will leave the school without entertaining any questions or entertaining any discussions about our findings. That opportunity will be provided to you after you have received and reviewed our completed written report. At the outset, I want to recognize and thank a couple of people publicly myself, uh, including the other members of the team for their service to you and the Middle States Association. And since many of you have not met all of them, I'd like to introduce Dr. Angela Rufo, who's an accreditation officer with the Middle States Association, Mr. Anthony Cook, the superintendent of the Diocese of Rochester, Ms. Anne Marie Deutsch, principal at St. Mary's School in Canadega, Ms. Tara Gandolfo, art teacher at the Delaware Valley Middle School in Milford, Pennsylvania, Deacon William Hines, St. Joseph's Collegiate Institute in Buffalo, Mr. Thomas Manko, president of Archbishop Walsh, Ms. Marlene O'Connor, principal of Kenmare High School in Jersey City, New Jersey, Ms. Lisa Parson, Principal Immaculate Heart in Watertown, New York. Ms. Dawn Riggi, who's the Principal at Mount St. Mary in Kenmore, New York. Dr. Gregory Rassacone, who comes to us from St. John's University in Staten Island. Mrs. Elizabeth Watson, who's a science teacher with the Delaware Valley Middle School, again in Milford, Pennsylvania. And Mr. Sam Zalaka, who's the Principal of Christ the King School in Amherst, New York. You join me in giving them a round of applause. This has proven to be an outstanding team of educators, all of whom, excepting for Dr. Rufo and myself, who work full-time for the Middle States Association, are volunteers who have given their personal and professional time this week to provide the service to you. We came together as a team on Monday, and for the most part, we were strangers, but we worked dig diligently to conduct as thorough an evaluation of the school as was possible. It's a tribute to their professionalism and expertise that we were able to coalesce as a team so quickly and that we are able to produce what I hope will be a fine work in service to your school. As a team, we would also like to thank all of you uh, for the work that we know and the contributions we know you made to the self-study process. Uh, the self-study and the supporting documents were prepared for our review and were for the most part very comprehensive and enhanced our ability to efficiently and thoroughly complete our work. We'd like to especially thank Mr. Chris, Superintendent and the Internal Coordinator, Cheryl Canfield and Barbara Messina and the entire administrative team at the diocese offices and at the individual schools for their leadership roles in preparing for our visit and their cooperation this week. And you deserve a round of applause. <laughs> it's important to note that uh, accreditation is a voluntary activity. We're here because you invited us. You ask us to review your foundation documents which describe your preferred future you, examine, you ask us to examine your assessments of the MSA survey data and student performance, which constitutes your current reality. And we are really here to partner with you as you strategically plan for your system of school, your system of school's future. Therefore, we came here with several purposes. First, we were charged with ensuring that the Diocese of Syracuse currently meets the middle state standards for system accreditation, and that procedures are in place to ensure the continuing compliance of those standards at the individual component schools. We are here to determine if the requirements of the accreditation protocol you select, selected excellence by design for systems have been met. And finally, we were here to confirm your commitment to fulfill the expectation that after you leave, you will implement your improvement plans over the term of the accreditation cycle and make a good <coughs> effort to achieve the goals you've set. But in addition, as Mr. Chris said, in addition to being credit accreditors, we are here as your critical friends. We came to observe and listen with discerning eyes and ears as professional friends and colleagues, and what we have to say to you this afternoon is offered in that spirit and our desire to leave you in a better position to achieve your goals than before we arrived. Let me begin, begin the report by sharing with you those attributes of the schools with which we were most impressed. We came to the Diocese of Syracuse with the understanding that we would find both diversity and disparity among the system's 22 schools reflecting the unique identity of those schools and the capacity of those schools to engage in the school improvement process and to embark on a journey of continuous improvement. What we discovered was a system of schools evolving along a variety of paths wrought by their geography, their demographics, <coughs> their politics, their traditions, 
and variances in their understanding of what needs to be done and how to get it done. We found school communities throughout the diocese with a strong sense of who they are, a thoughtful reflection of where they are and where they need to go, and a strong commitment to and a passion for getting there. What these schools need is a more centralized leadership and a more unified, unified process to act on that commitment and passion. The Diocese of Syracuse is unique. We were impressed with the overall quality of the planning process to date, the alignment between the system and the individual school foundation documents, the data that you've collected to date, and your plans to utilize that data to inform your school improvement planning. At both the system and school leadership level, there is an understanding of the improvement process that reflects the beginnings of a planning culture within the school community, which may have existed before you began the accreditation process, but we hope it was strengthened we hope it was strengthened and enhanced by the process itself. There is a difference between long-range planning, which prepares an institution for an inevitable future, and strategic planning, which strives to alter the current conditions in ways that will lead to a preferred future. Your planning process is an example of the latter. It has led to the identification of areas for improvement that will lead to the type of systemic change that the accreditation process was designed to encourage. The Middle State Standards for Accreditation is designed to ensure that the requisite conditions for continuous school improvement are in place. Our review of the standards, stakeholder surveys, and supporting documentation supports your self-assessment that those standards have been met. In our final report, we will include both commendations in those areas in which we have found the diocese or individual schools exceed those standards and recommendations for your consideration where we believe we can make a qualitative improvement in those areas. We can only highlight a few of them as examples this afternoon. The exercise of governance by the Dyson office and the relationship between the superintendent and the school principals and pastors is positive and strong. It was described to us as the umbrella under which we function while recognizing each school's individuality. A reflection of what I have learned, uh, a reflection of what I've learned this week is referred to as I understand subsidiarity. The process of encouraging those closest to the ground to determine how best to meet their needs. It embraces the variances in models of governance and finance we observed this week while maintaining the central mission. It segregates those issues best handled centrally and those left, best left to the site-based decision making as the system of schools works on its planning for the future. It will be important that practices and procedures that have been in place and that have served the system of schools to date by guaranteeing each school's historical traditions and those that will need to be adopted to carry out the system of schools forward to their next chapter be codified for clarity, be communicated to increase awareness, and be monitored to ensure consistent implementation. As a team, we found the school's organizations and climates to be exemplary. Universally, the stakeholders expressed appreciation for the school's academic programs, personalized learning, active student engagement, and attention to Catholic identity. Our meetings with parents, students, and staff found the assistance component schools focused on providing academic challenges, on supporting students to ensure their success, and provided classes and co-curricular opportunities to meet the diverse interests and aptitudes of the students. Put it succinctly, the students in the Syracuse diocese are happy. They're motivated by the challenge you offer them, they appreciate the close-knit community created for them, and they feel supported by their teachers. They describe you in ways that every teacher hopes they are perceived by their students. While there was a great deal of variance among the facilities we visited, they were consistently clean, and even the tired buildings, as I understand they referred to, <laughs> were well maintained. All of the diocesan facilities appeared to be in compliance with the requirements for health and safety, and although the diocese and the individual parishes appeared to be most responsive to the facility needs of the schools, that process seems to be more reactive than proactive, and there is a need for a strategic facility plan process, and that will be among our recommendations included in our final report. Our report will also include many more observations and commendations related specifically to each of the standards, too numerous to mention here, which we hope will validate for you the exceptional work you have been doing and the importance of continuing that effort as you plan to take the systems of school to the next level of excellence. 
As I noted at the beginning of the re this report, our role as critical friends is to share with you additional observations this afternoon that will also be included in greater detail in the written report. We believe they will enhance your success as you work towards attainment of your school improvement goals. Like most schools and school systems, the Diocese of Syracuse is faced with doing more in terms of its student performance, doing that with increasingly limited resources, and facing a growing number of students who are bringing with them educational challenges. Doug Reeves, the educational researcher and author, provides a taxonomy for classifying schools based on their students' performance and the degree to which the school takes ownership of that performance. Some schools, according to Rees, prefer to blame the students and those conditions they consider to be outside their control for their students' performance, while others accept responsibility for challenging both their best and least able students in ways that will lead them to continue to outperform their previous best. We believe that your system of schools is best described by this latter category. Your improvement goals are bold, and they reflect a deep commitment to continually striving for excellence. There are rich, albeit varied, planning processes throughout the system of schools on which a more centralized process of planning can be built. Care will need to be taken to ensure that all of those planning processes are articulated to create a synergy of purpose rather than a diffusion of energy and resources. This should include the planning being done at the school level, the best practices within the system of schools already in place, and an organizational capacity goal included in your school improvement plan. In addition to your plans to centralize management of student information and to align curriculum, consideration should be given to a more robust system for assessing student performance, a more coordinated and comprehensive professional development program to support your plans, and more consistent supervisory practices to monitor the effectiveness of the changes that you are planning to make. Strategic plans regarding finances, facilities, and the staffing of the diocese offices should also be instituted to ensure the system's capacity to fulfill the promise of the strategic plan. Failure to do this will lead to a perception that each of these initiatives is desperate and will threaten the sustainability of the process. It will dampen the enthusiasm among the schools and the staff that has been created by the planning that has taken place to date. <coughs> and the opportunity that exists right now may not come again for a long time. As a team, we recommend that each of the goals and accompanying action plans be revisited and examined to identify where they may need to be aligned and how the activities in each of the action plans can be sequenced or coordinated. Care should be taken not to attempt to do too much too soon, but to carefully build the base, the base data that you need, and shape the strategies to move forward. In general, we will be including a number of recommendations for your consideration regarding the revision of your action plans to include one, examining the need for more detailed and deliberate activities to increase the probability of success, to coordinating the activities among the three goals, to exploring the option of sequencing the goals and their activities into a logical interdependent sequence and timeline, to include in your action plans existing relevant best practices and procedures, and increasing the wider school community's awareness of the goals and action plans. In the opinion of the team, failing to more de fully develop your action plans will inhibit the implementation of those plans. It will reduce your ability to sustain your, your improvement efforts and ultimately prevent you from achieving your goals. Our full written report will contain more specific detail on how you may, how you may want to proceed to address these challenges and the others that you will be facing as you move forward. These are some of the major themes and findings that will be included in our written report. We offer them, again, as critical friends in the hope that they will help you in your work toward fulfilling your mission. But we're also here to make a decision regarding whether to recommend an initial systems accreditation for the Diocese of Syracuse and the accreditation and reaccreditation of its 22 component schools. In reaching our accreditation decision, we were required to consider the middle state standards for accreditation as well as the requirements of the Excellence by Design Protocol. And finally, we were asked to consider your commitment to the school improvement process and the probability that it will be sustained throughout the accreditation cycle. Dr. Rufo, can I have the envelope, please? <laughs>
Based on our experiences here this week, the team is pleased to recommend to the Middle States Commission on Elementary and Secondary Schools that the Diocese of Syracuse and its component schools be awarded accreditation and were applicable reaccreditation without stipulation for a period of seven years ending in November 2022. Congratulations. <laughs> I remember being told when I entered the field of education that in order to be an educator, you have to believe in the future. You have to believe that the future will be better than the past and the present. Present, And you have to have the audacity to believe that you're the one that's going to make the difference. <laughs> this week, we felt that belief in the future as we visited your schools and the offices. Uh, we experienced your hope that the future will, in fact, be brighter. And we witnessed your audacity to make a difference in the Diocese of Syracuse. Thank you for opening your school to us, for sharing with us your hopes and dreams and plans for the future and the wonderful hospitality that has been extended to us. We wish you continued success. Well, thank you, Dr. Cram and Dr. Rufo. Thank you also to the visiting team uh, sincerely, we have so much appreciated your time here. Uh, I know that uh, I speak somewhat for the bishop here too, that those from the Buffalo area, from which he calls home, and from other areas of the state, uh, he's overjoyed to have everyone here visiting. Uh, I hope that as a visiting team that you consider us friends at this point, that we welcome you back at any time and encourage your feedback as we continue to move forward in our uh, implementation process. And to all of the principals, all of the people on the planning team, uh, all the pastors, uh, everyone here is really supporting what is so right for our, our schools, all 22 of our Catholic schools. All different in some way, unique way, but all united under the Diocese of Syracuse. I personally thank you for all the great work that you've done and I look forward to the work that we will commence once we leave, walk out of this room today. So thank you all. Thanks for coming here today. Uh, thank you for our visitors uh, to be here. And um, let's party. Yeah.